This video is for DeFi developers. I'm about to show you how to swap code on Uniswap V2 and SushiSwap. Because if you're looking for arbitrage opportunities, you need to know how to swap tokens on as many protocols as possible. I'm Blockman, and I show developers how to use Uniswap. If you want to learn Uniswap V3 without spending days or weeks reading the documentation and code on GitHub, sign up for my Uniswap V3 Masterclass. Link in the description. Now let's code some swaps. I have a hard hat project here with some packages installed. Note that I'm using Ethers 5, so if you're using Ethers 6, you'll need to make some modifications for this to work. I have a couple vanilla ERC20 tokens here that we're going to be using for our swap, and I'm going to do swaps locally because testnets don't have much liquidity for Uni V2 and Sushi pairs. But all the code to set up a Uniswap V2 or Sushi swap environment is available in the description. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's start the hardhat node. And we can do that with npx hardhat node. I have a script here to set up a Uniswap v2 environment locally, deploy contracts, pairs, and add liquidity to them, so that we can write a quick script together to swap tokens on those pairs. Now this is constantly evolving, but I've covered it in some other videos, so we'll only walk through it really quickly here. We start by importing some modules from Ethers. Then we import the artifact for wrapped Ether and then the artifacts for the other contracts that we'll be using, the factory, the router, and the pair. In our main function, we start by creating two signers, which we'll name owner and trader. We could create more, but this is enough for our simple case here. We deploy the two tokens that we've defined in the contracts directory, so USDT and USDC, and we also deploy wrapped ether. Then we mint 100,000 of each of the tokens, USDT and USDC, to both of the signers, to the owner, and to trader. Then we deploy two factories. Normally you would just deploy one, but, but because Uniswap and SushiSwap function partially the same, and you're able to get and deploy pairs and do swaps in the same way. We are deploying two factories so that this is like deploying two exchanges, one factory for Uniswap V2 and one factory for SushiSwap. Then on each of those, on each of those factories, we deploy a pair. And our pair will be USDT to USDC. And a pair is like the V2 equivalent of a pool on V3, but the pool on V3s are significantly more complex. I like how easy and intuitive Uniswap V2 is. Now we get the addresses for those two pairs we deployed. And then on each exchange, we deploy a router. And the router is the contract that we use to do a swap. Now we approve transfers for each signer, for each token, for each exchange. And there's definitely a way to do this more elegantly in a loop, but I haven't written it yet, so we're just going to go with this. Then we add liquidity to the first pair. And this is the addresses of the tokens, the amount of liquidity to add, the minimum liquidity to add to prevent this from reverting, the address of the owner, and the and the deadline, and also a gas limit. And we do the exact same thing for the second pair. And then here we log the reserves on the pools. So that's how much of each token has been added to each pool. And that also determines the price on each pool. I keep saying pool because I'm used to Uniswap V3, but I mean pair. And then we log the addresses of all the contracts we deployed. We're going to copy and paste this into the next script so that we can reference the contracts we deployed here over there. Let's run this script and then grab these contract addresses. 
and you can run it by pasting this into your console. Open a new window. We can see the reserves of the two pools and the addresses of the tokens we deployed. So copy those token addresses. Open the second script and replace the addresses near the top of that file. You'll want to do this every time because there's no guarantee the addresses will be exactly the same. They can change. And then you'll get some really weird hard to, hard to debug behavior. Ask me how I know. So here we import our ethers, modules, and our artifacts like we did before. We connect a provider to the local hardhat network. We initialize some contracts so that we can call functions on them. The router, USDT, and USDC. And then we have a quick function here to check the balance on the signer's wallet. We'll run this before and after the swap just to ensure that balance has changed and the swap actually worked. So here we get the balance of Ether. And then we use the USDT and USDC contracts to get the balance of those tokens for this user, for this signer. And then we log the results. Now in our main function, let's start by getting the signers. And this is going to be really short. Then check the balance in Trader's wallet. We'll be using Trader for this swap. Now let's call the function to do a swap. Connect Trader and then call swap exact tokens for tokens. And this is similar to the exact in function on Uniswap v3. So we specify the amount of tokens we want to pass into this swap. And then the pool, the pair, determines the equivalent amount to give us back. The first argument is the input amount. I'll just pass one token. I'm using parse units because it has to be in way and this token has 18 decimals. The second argument is the minimum amount out. That's to say, if we don't get at least this amount out, the transaction will revert. And this can protect you from slippage, but we're not going to use it here, so we'll just set it to zero. The next argument is the path that we want to swap tokens through. We'll swap from USDT to USDC by putting those addresses into an array. The next argument is the to address. That will be the signer we're swapping with. And then we have the deadline. I'm also going to pass a really high gas limit to ensure this transaction goes through. Again, don't do this in real life. then wait for the transaction to complete and log the balance of the signer. And let's give this a run in our terminal. Fix that typo here. And let's give this a run in our terminal. We have the balances before and the balances after. And you can see that the amount of USDT decreased and the amount of USDC increased. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to learn about Uniswap or DeFi. Give this video a like and subscribe if you found it helpful. And I'll see you next time.